Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. These little guys generate a huge amount of data while they're flying, and they store it in their flight logs. If something goes haywire with your flight, like it did with mine not that long ago, you'll want to know how to extract that data and analyze it. This video will touch on what kinds of data are available and some of the tools around that will help you figure out what went wrong. Let's get into it. So first of all, I want to admit I'm a complete novice at this analysis of flight records business, but I have learned a lot since my flyaway event of September the 1st. And I've received a huge amount of support from some very helpful and talented individuals on the internet. So with that, let me share what I know. There are basically four kinds of files available to you to analyze your DJI drone flights. And three of them are available even if your drone is completely lost. So let's walk through them. The first three files are stored on your phone or whatever device you're using to control your flight. To access these, plug your phone into your computer and access the folder called DJI slash DJI.go.v4. How to do this will vary a bit depending on whether you have an iOS or Android device. I suggest you create a folder on your computer for the flight you're looking into. You'll end up with many, many files, so having a dedicated folder for each flight's data will help prevent confusion. Your main flight records are in the folder on your phone, cleverly called Flight Record. You'll see files starting with DJI Flight Record with the date and time right after it, one for every one of your flights. Copy the file or files that you're interested in onto your computer. This TXT file will be the main one you'll use to dig into the details. The second file to grab while you still have your phone connected is the detailed flight record or DAT file. These files are located in a subfolder of the flight records folder called MCDAT flight records. Again, they're named with the date and time. The third file to look for is simply the local cache of your video. This is in a folder called DJI record and again is named with date and time. When I had my flyaway incident, I discovered this folder was empty. For some stupid reason, I had turned off local video caching. I think I got tired of the video cache full message that comes up. Do not turn off your video cache. It might be a significant piece of the puzzle if you actually lose your drone. Anyways, copy your file over to the computer folder that you've set up. The fourth flight record is located on your drone itself, assuming that you haven't lost the drone. So plug your drone into your computer. Uh, the kind of connection to use and where the port is located will vary upon the drone, obviously. In the case of my Mavic 2, it's a USB-C connector located on the side of the drone. This file on your drone is encrypted, so you probably can't do anything with it yourself. But DJI support and or the experts out there will find it useful. Download the DJI Assistant 2 application from the DJI support site and use it to export the flight record to your computer. The file will look something like this. Now the fun begins. For analyzing your main flight record, I found three basic options in increasing order of complexity. Phantom Help Log Viewer, Airdata.com, sometimes known as Airdata UAV, and a tricky tool called CSV View. I would start with Phantom Help Log Viewer, and despite the name, you can read the flight records for most types of drone types with this nice tool. There's an easy to use map view, and you can export two types of CSV view files for further viewing and analysis in spreadsheet tools like Microsoft Excel. Let's have a quick look. All right, so after loading my TXT main flight log into Phantom Help, this is what it opens up and sees. Uh, you can see a map view up here showing your flight, the green, green line there, and a tabular view down here showing basic information about your flight. And the main control is this little green dot, which is a slider which moves your drone, which is that red triangle there, along the flight path. And as it moves, it also rotates around to show the direction that the, the drone was, show, was, was pointing. 
Um, first thing I like to do is change the map size to medium. That gives you a better view of what was going on. Um, so let's let's have a look at what uh, what you can see here. Over on the on the right hand side, you can see the positions of your joysticks. These are the left and right joysticks. And as you move around, you can see that they reflect what you were doing at the time. Okay. And this blue um, artificial horizon kind of symbol here represents the aircraft's uh, roll. All right. And by the way, you can use these Google zoom in, zoom out kind of tools as well to, to have a closer look at what was going on. Now, uh, in terms of this table down here below with the data, what it shows is your time. So each of these rows is uh, a few tenths of a second. It shows you your flight mode, shows you how many GPS satellites you had. It shows your altitude in two different formats or two different sensors, I should say. The IMU or inertial uh, measurement unit altitude is what the barometric pressure reading of your craft um, determine the altitude to be. So in this case, uh, at three minutes, it was 13.5 feet. The VPS altitude is your visual positioning system altitude based on the cameras pointing downwards. And you can see in this case, it's off by almost, uh, well, two and a half feet. Um, the only thing I can imagine in this particular case is that I was flying low over a field of uh, of wildflowers, actually, because this is a, a bee farm or an apiary, and um, so I'm thinking that the visual positioning system was reading the ground as that fairly dense layer of, of flowers, and um, so then you then you can see your speed in miles per hour, uh, distance to home, your battery percentage. And uh, this stuff over here is quite interesting because it shows the voltage of each of the cells of your battery. And that's useful because if your cell deviation is more than 0.1 volts between the, between the cells, that's an indicator that your battery is aging. Okay, so you can uh, scan down that. I think mine are pretty darn good. Um, the last uh, column here is is messages. So any time that your craft shows you a message, such as a high wind warning or low battery or anything like that, it will display that message in this column here of your flight viewer. So here I can see the home point was updated. All right, so that's cool for sure. And there's four th different things you can download. Uh, the KML that you can download is a file format that you can then load into a uh, system like Google Earth to get a visual, uh, a three-dimensional view of your flight. That's cool. Um, these next two are what appealed to me, downloading a C CSV file and a verbose CSV file. Um, CSV stands for comma separated value, which is, well, I don't think it's actually separated by commas, but it's a file format that allows you to uh, read the file into uh, a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel. The, the basic one here is basically a, a subset of the verbose or complete CSV file. This one has every single data point, I believe, that's in your file. So everything that your flight uh, recorder recorded is in this one. This one's just a little simpler to read. And I'll show you those in a second. Lastly, you can download a flight log. I don't know what that is. It seems to be a binary file that's uh, not terribly useful. At least I couldn't figure out what to do with that. All right, so let's have a look at one of these CSV files. In this case, this is the verbose version or the very large version of it. Um, I've uploaded it into Microsoft Excel. Uh, and you'll notice here there's a theme. For every data file you get, you can import it into a tool, which then offers you some export formats, uh, which you, you can then use to load into a different tool. Believe me, you could spend a lifetime analyzing flight logs. So, um, so in this file, there are 275 columns of information available to you, covering everything that the craft recorded. and. Um, I'm not going to tour you through all of it. Suffice it to say that each row is a, is a time. 
uh, you'll see information here such as distance. You'll see a lot of columns that are start start with OSD, which I don't know what that really stands for, whether it really means on-screen display, which is what Google told me, but uh, it's basically your, your drone information as opposed to your gimbal. Uh, if you recall from my flyaway, my OSD yaw, which is column V here, was different from my gimbal yaw, and that's another column somewhere down to, off to the right. So you can see all of this information in here. It has camera settings in here. Here, Oh, here's the gimbal information. Gimbal is double click. I'm not sure what that even means. Um, but there is there is a lot of stuff in this file and it goes on for a very long time. All right, so you can play with this. You can extract rows out. You can filter the columns for different information that you're looking for or anomalies. All of the tools that Microsoft Excel offers or whatever your favorite spreadsheet package is um, are available to you to do data analysis. Very powerful, wonderful, <laughs> but, but very complicated and it might take you a long time to find what it is that you're looking for. All right, next let's look at airdata.com. So airdata.com uh, or airdata UAV is another tool, a little more complicated, I would say, than the Phantom Help uh, Log Viewer, but it does provide you additional features and additional depth of information. Um, it is free. You do have to register to, uh, to access the site because you upload the files and you can access them later and, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of a, a nice feature. Here, here's the, uh, the basic view after you load a flight. I loaded that same flight that uh, we looked at a minute ago. Um, it does show you different things like power settings, minutes per battery, this kind of thing. Shows you the weather at the time of the site and you can, or the time of the flight, excuse me, and you can access other information such as the KP index at the time. Uh, so it was somewhere between three and four. Um, other features, are, as I mentioned, require you to upgrade to a paid version of the tool, such as in-flight wind. Um, some interesting things, you can investigate your controls response time, which I don't think you can do on the Phantom Viewer site. So that's kind of interesting, and I noticed that my rudder response time was a little on the slow side, so that uh, might indicate there was a problem there that I need to look into. So in addition, you can look at other details of your, of your flight or your equipment, so it shows you the address, the GPS, uh, the, the lat latitude, longitude, position, your duration of the flight, and, and uh, what drone it was the battery that was actually in place. That's kind of a nice feature. Um, you can review any notifications that came up through the flight. And I think you can zoom in yeah, and uh, have a look. I know at the end of my flight, I was, my uh, battery was getting a little low. Um, so here's, here was my low battery warning, I think. Uh, and I flew back home. So lots of lots of details in here, and there's a larger map version that you can uh, you can look at. So I find Air Data UAV very useful. It uh, provides a little bit more detail, a little bit uh, further insights into some of the elements of your flight that you might not see otherwise. The third tool we'll look at is called CSV View. It provides graphical views of your flight logs and the parameters within them. By the way, I'm sure there are many other tools out there in addition to these three, and I encourage you to share your favorites in the comments below this video. CSV View is a tool for experts, and it's a lot less slick in appearance than either Phantom Help or Air Data. CSV View is a downloadable tool, and honestly, it's a bit tricky to set up requiring particular Java runtime environments to be installed on your machine in order to operate. Brief instructions for using the tool are on the website, but user manuals supposedly embedded in the zip files that come with the tool were absent in the versions I downloaded. 
That said, if you're willing to brave these issues, it's a great tool. What it does is enable you to visualize any number of signals or states in the flight log in a graphical format. Let me show you. When you first launch the tool, you'll see this very plain looking window up here. And like I said, this is, this is not a slick tool, it's, it's just powerful. In this field up here where it says click here to specify DAT, text, CSV or TSV file, you can input your flight log. So I will select the one from my September 1st flyaway uh, as, as an example, it, because it shows you some interesting things. All right, so it reads it in and it shows you what are called SIG players. SIG players are basically graphs. So it provides you a number of pre-canned ones and it also provides you what's called an empty one. So I'll try, I'll, I'll show you with the empty one. When you click that, it brings up a window that again is just blank. So what you do is you pick signals. So there's this thing here called pick signals. And for demonstration purposes, I will pick the two most interesting, interesting signals that we saw on my flyaway. So the gimbal yaw is one. So all you do is you find the signal you're interested in. These ones are what are called time sig series signals. And over here are state signals. So here's the gimbal yaw and the OSD yaw right there. So you select all of the signals that you're interested in, and I'll just show you two, but you can also throw in another one, and I'll show you that in a second. So you, you click Update Plot, and there it is. You just have to close that window. And you can see the graph that I showed you in my flyaway video, where the you can see the OSD yaw, which is the, the actual aircraft uh, horizontal direction, and the red line is the gimbal yaw which is the um, uh, direction of the gimbal and normally they track very closely together as you can see here but then when when things went crazy they separated massively and that was of course the, the source of the problem so it's that kind of ability to very quickly visualize and um, and see right in front of your eyes uh, changes in these signals um, that, that make this power this tool so very powerful and then if you're if you want you can then pick another signal so for example I could pick uh, the the rudder as an example and update the plot and then move this again and now you can see that a blue line has been added here for the uh, the rudder control all right and you can add and subtract these these um, signals by selecting or deselecting them as you see fit. So very cool, very powerful because you've got all 275 or maybe even more um, signals to choose from here, allowing you to compare, compare and contrast as they say in, uh, in high school English. So um, there you go, that's uh, CSV view. So there you go. There's the three ways that you can visualize and analyze the data that's in the main flight record, the TXT. So we're done, right? Oh no, there's much, much more. Just kidding. We have actually covered the first one and that's the main one, that's the main flight record. The second item we'll cover in just a second. And the last two I'll just tell you right now are, are simple. The video cache, these are just MP4 files, uh, regular movie files. So you can have a look at those uh, whenever you want, assuming you have your video cache turned on. And that fourth item, it is a form of DAT file, but it is in a proprietary format that uh, I believe only DJI has the keys to unlock. So that's useful to have. If you are in a discussion with the DJI support team, they will expect you to be able to provide that file to them. So let's have a look at the uh, row number two here, the, the uh, detailed flight record. There are basically three tools available to analyze the DAT files. Um, on the top row here, you can see there's a tool called Extract DJI, followed by CSV View, the one that we looked at previously, and both of those lead to graphical views of your data. Now, I was not able to get the Extract DJI um, tool to work for me. I'm sure there's smarter folks out there who can uh, figure out how to do it, 
but I wasn't able to do it for at least my files, which are Mavic 2 Pro files. The third tool that's available is called DATCON. And the DATCON file uh, also generates some data. And again, unfortunately, I was not able to get it to work. But I'll show you a little bit about that. DATCON is in the same family of tools as CSV View, and in fact you may have seen the DATCON reference down here when uh, I was talking about CSV View earlier. Again, there's an introduction, there's a, a series of instructions for downloading the tool, and again it's a tool that runs on your desktop, um, and then you use that to read in DAT files and create, as it says here, output files that contain other information that you can then analyze in Excel or other tools to understand what's going on. As I said, unfortunately, I was not able to get DATCON to read my Mavic 2 files. Maybe I was missing something, but there you go. Okay, now we're done. Quick recap. There's three files that can be very valuable to you that exist on your phone or your mobile device um, that you will have regardless of whether your drone was recovered or not. You've got your main flight record, which is terrifically full of data for you. There's a DAT file that has further detailed flight information. And finally, you've got a video cache that provides you the camera view of what was going on during your flight. And then the fourth file is on the drone itself, assuming that you can recover your drone. And that file is, uh, contains even more detailed flight information that DJI support will use to help you analyze what, what went wrong with your flight. There you go. I know this was long, but I hope you found it valuable and interesting. And good luck with your data analysis. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. And uh, please do comment below the video. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a single one of my exciting new videos. Thanks again.